Good morning. What a beautiful day in the neighborhood, don't you think? Yeah, well, we have a good day today, and we've come together and to worship God, and we have a baptism for Tretley Alexander today, and we got a lot going on that's fun and exciting. So, so welcome again to worship. We'll begin with our gathering hymn, and you can stay seated. And it's uh, Gather Us In, which is just appropriate because that's what we're doing today. Verses 1, 2, and 4. confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways, and when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live, we turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. On, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace 
peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our home, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way Kyrie eleison, We continue with the prayer of the day. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the readings. The first reading is from Amos, the seventh chapter. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading is Psalm 85. Please join me as we read the psalm responsively. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. 
The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. The second reading is from Ephesians, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks for standing for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and leaders of Galilee, when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask of me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? And her mother replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came back and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, Jesus our brother, and the Holy Spirit our comforter. If you remember last week, I preached about prophets. And what prophets do, God picks them out and says, go tell the people this. And sometimes the prophets are also given information on what God will do in the future. And so we have that same thing with Amos today. Amos has shown a plumb line. Now, if I look at this wall here, it looks pretty straight. And I'm sure a plumb line was used. So the wall will be straight and strong. 
Well, God was holding a plumb line against Israel. And Israel wasn't following through on the covenant God had made with them. God's concerned about the foreigner, the alien, the widow, and the orphan. And what was happening is, is they weren't being taken care of. And God wasn't happy about it. And it wasn't just, it's like Ezekiel, it's the Israelites were a stubborn, rebellious people for many generations. And God was losing his patience with them. Well, I also shared that we are prophets last week because we have a message. We have a message of good news of this guy called Jesus who came into this world because God so loved the world, died for our sins, and gave us the gift of eternal life. That's good news. We have a God who cares about us all the time. He didn't just make us and then ran away and hid. He made us, and in the baptism today, when we do the baptism of Trentley, look for that Holy Spirit, because that's what Trentley's going to get in his baptism, just like you got in your baptism. But we're to go out and tell our stories. And usually us telling our faith stories or telling stories about Jesus if we do it to someone we know, they usually will listen. You know, to get people to be part of the church community is to first be a friend. And when you have that friendship, it gives you an opportunity to be able to share your faith. And chances are, if you're in that friendship and sharing your faith, there aren't a lot of major consequences. Either people believe you or they don't, or they say that's interesting, but not for me. But there aren't heavy consequences. But there can be when one is called to speak truth to power. What we hear in Amos today is the priest and the king wanted Amos to be gone. They didn't want to hear it from him. They said, you're in northern Israel, go to southern Israel. We don't want to hear it. And they didn't want to hear it because they were oppressing the poor. And from that oppression, the people of the religious authorities and political were rich and wealthy. And the people suffered. And God was listening to and concerned about the suffering people. John criticized Herod's relationship with his current wife. It went against the social standards and the laws. And it cost John his life. Jesus went up against political and religious authorities and it cost him his life. These agents of God, Amos, John, and Jesus, were working on God's work and bringing God's reign onto, from heaven to earth. Being an agent, being an agent of God or a prophet for God can sometimes be a struggle because this world competes against God's reign. We all have enough to survive and thrive. We know there are extremely wealthy people in our society, and there are extremely poor people. And God cares about the poor and wants us to as well. In Dodge County alone, from the 2010 census, 6% of the people in the county live in poverty. That's 1,300 people living in poverty among us in this county. That's a fact. 
And knowing this, what does it mean for us? Well, one of the things it means for us is, is when we look at Ephesians today is we are blessed. We are blessed by God, by his love. We have been given gifts, treasures, resources, salvation. And we, as a, as a being blessed, are to be a blessing to others that have less. It was kind of fun. A couple Wednesdays ago, we stuffed some bags with paper towels, toilet paper, shampoo, toothpaste, toothbrushes for families in Dodge County that come for a meal at the Episcopal Church on Wednesday. We are part of God's redemptive project. God wants to reconcile everything in Christ. We are already reconciled to God because we are in Christ. We don't see or have God's wrath against us because we are in Christ. That's a blessing. And we are to look at ways to help others who aren't so blessed. When I was at the police department, one of the jobs I had was supervising the police chaplains. And there was this one chaplain, Chick is what he went by, and he says, you know what the church's job is? And I said, what? And he said, it's easy. We reach them, we teach them, we mend them, we send them. <laughs> and I've thought about that a lot, and you know what? I think he's right. Because isn't our job to reach out, to let people know about Jesus and bring him into God's family? That's reaching. Reaching out and telling others. Remember, it's not our job to convert people. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But our job is to tell our stories and tell about Jesus. And then when we reach them, we teach them. What does it mean to be a Christian? How do you live your life out differently because you are a Christian? If we live our lives out no differently than the rest of society, then how do we stand out? But when we love and serve God and our neighbors, that's what makes us different. And again, can we reach out and teach people in Dodge County? Yeah. Do you know a third of the population in Dodge County doesn't belong to a church? That's almost 6,500, over 6,500 people don't belong to a church in Dodge County. Again, that was from the 2010 census. Sometimes people are hurting and so not only do we reach them and teach them, but we mend them and heal them. In James, it says, if someone is suffering in your mix, to lay hands and pray on them and anoint them with oil so that they can heal. Because it's hard to be sent out when we're hurting. And so after we're reached and teached and mended, we are sent out. We are sent out to love and serve God and love and serve our neighbor. And that's our adventure with God, to, be in, to go out and love people. And God, through the Holy Spirit, will give us the words and the opportunities to share that love with people in the community. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Change My Heart, O oh God. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May it be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Hold me and make me the 
This is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May it be like you. We now have the wonderful blessing of a baptism. And like I said, look for the Holy Spirit to show up. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents Trentley to be baptized? Alex and Jenna. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your son Trentley baptized into Christ? As you bring him to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people. That's us. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help him grow in the Christian faith and life? Mm -hmm. Megan and Jeremy, do you promise to nurture Trentley in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Trentley and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say we do. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say I renounce them. Renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. Amen. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, say, I renounce them. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water, you nurtured and sustained us in all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of, your, of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John, anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage of sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. 
You made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit that Trentley baptized today may be given new life. Wash away his sin, cleanse him in this water, and bring him forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Showtime, Trentley. <laughs> yeah, he wants the water. There we go. Trentley Xander, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Trentley, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in his presence. Currently, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. He has claimed you. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of light. Let us together welcome Trentley, now newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. We join in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is going to be a fake light. <laughs> blowing it out. This is a candle to represent the light that he will bring into the world, just like he's brought into your world already. And when it's his anniversary of his baptism, you can take it out and light it and remind him that he is a child of God, beloved, accepted, forgiven. And the church also has gifts that we like to give. And Tanya will come over with those. Yeah. One is just, this is Trentley's Certificate of Baptism. And then you sponsors, Megan, <laughs> Jeremy, that's yours to remind you of your responsibilities in Trentley's life as well.
Now we continue with the offering prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Let us pray and come before our triune God in prayer. Holy Parent, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon our beloved church, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, that by our witness all might praise your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Awesome Creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. Lord, in your mercy. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all who are survivors of violence. Guard the refugee and the immigrant and protect all those who are victims of prejudice and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we pray for this holy house and for all who worship here. We pray especially for those whose efforts behind the scenes often go unnoticed from the custodians to office staff, AV people, and all our other volunteers. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, God, for the saints, martyrs, and prophets who have died in faith. We remember those in the community who have recently died. Unite them as God's children. Assure us that we are yours forever. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements. First of all, thank you to all the people that were involved in music today and just added to our worship service. Carol said, can you do a plug? Because he's in like one of the dramas up in Manderville. <laughs> so there's your plug. <laughs> we have uh, just a reminder, Liz Smith is our new secretary and has started July 1st. Next Sunday, um, it's wrong on the snippets, we're, I we're indoor again says outdoor, but we're not. We're going to be indoor next Sunday, and after worship, we are going to do a special thank you for Cheryl. And there's donuts and coffee after this worship service as well. Offering Basket and Globe are over there. Um, if you are interested in the visitation team, visiting those that are homebound, please let me or the church office know. And Meals on Wheels is going this week, so if you have time to deliver Meals on Wheels to some of those homebound and get them a, a, a nice hot meal, that'd be great. And then Vacation Bible School is going to be August 9th through the 13th. Are there any other announcements? Receive God's blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
Our closing hymn is one of my favorites, <laughs> so I'm excited. It's just the refrain, but it's how I feel towards God, and uh, I, th I hope you like it too. God's peace and love today. You are the body of Christ in the world. And I don't it. <laughs>